everybody welcome back to my channel I had some requests for some more cooking videos so here we go spaghetti squash with sausage and sauce to spaghetti squash I have my knife and my cutting board I have olive oil garlic powder onion powder a half of an actual Vidalia onion aluminum foil and a pack of sweet Italian sausage one round cookie sheet that doesn't make a difference one small sheet cookie sheet and one large cookie sheet let's get started I have I have preheated the oven to 350 degrees. So we're gonna make spaghetti squash with roasted sausage and some red sauce. We're gonna doctor up some jar sauce. But I've had a lot of requests for cooking videos, but I've also had a lot of requests for more like cook with me videos. So this isn't me showing you a recipe. This is just what's something I decided to throw together. We'll see how it works in the end. Your guess is as good as mine. Now normally I use pop-up sheets um, for this, but this one large pan that I'm having is uh, too, it's too big for the pop-up sheets. And because I'm using oil on the uh, spaghetti squash, I need to have it totally covered. So, but the first thing we're literally just gonna do this. This is how you roast sausage in my family. I'll do anything to it. Just separate them a tiny bit. Usually I roast them till they're, till they're brown and turn them over and roast them till they're brown. But you know what? Um, if you've watched other cooking videos on my channel before, we've made um, sausage and pepper pasta. So I showed you there the different ways to do it. So there's a skill like you, you can only get from practice. You can see how it covers up oil with like in two seconds, like boom, boom. Okay. Jim said he would offer me any help I needed, but since I get a lot of flack from him helping me, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He may, he may be my runner. So if you've never had spaghetti squash before, I bought a second one because one, um, this first one they gave me really wasn't enough for me and Jim. So I figured I'd roast it all together. I don't have to add it all to the pasta, um, but I could if I want to. So you basically want to cut end to end, okay? It's a little bit difficult sometimes, like some people have a little bit difficulty with their knife work. Um, spaghetti squash is like a baby pumpkin. So there's a tip. You could get your bread knife. So you start, I tried to cut that with a my chef's knife. So I don't even see where I cut it right now. Oh, right here. So I tried to cut that with my chef's knife and you saw how much trouble I have, but watch watch this, the bread knife make quick work of it. Okay, because you're gonna saw. Because sometimes you can get a squash that's pretty tough. And then of course, getting through the stem end is always the hardest. So I always leave that to the end. Now you could pop the stem off if you, you know, if, if it comes off easy, but. There we go. There's that trick. Okay, I'm gonna split it and see, like, let God do it. Okay. So now I'm gonna cut the other one and we're gonna clean it out. Okay. Sweetie, I do hate to bother you. I forgot a spoon. Can you hear me at all? Yeah. Okay. What do you need me to do? It's all right, I got it. Never mind. Now I will tell you, I only ever learned to roast the spaghetti squash down so it can kind of steam itself. But I just learned recently Tabitha Brown from TikTok fame, Facebook fame. Um, she roasted hers up and she had it actually filled while it was roasting, which I thought was very interesting. You saw these little fibers? That's eventually what the spaghetti squash is gonna become, just all fibrous like that. You can see how it looks like spaghetti already, right? Take that piece off. I know it's a waste of meat, but. I missed it up. 
I'm gonna get the seeds out. And I brought over paper towels. If you have trouble gripping anything with seeds and stuff, do that with that. See, got all these seeded. Okay. Oh, there we go. Let's get the second one going. Now, if you have a compost pile or if you're a, a gardener who likes to make vegetables, I also am following somebody on TikTok who is germinating seeds and showing everybody how to do that. So not only YouTube, but TikTok's a really good resource for quick 60 second tutorials. <laughs> um, let's see. So those of you who have asked before, TikTok is a new social media app. It's not really that new, it's been out for a bit, but there used to be an app called Vine where they had 60 second videos. As a matter of fact, that's where like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Liza Koshy, she started on, on Vine. Zach King, they'd become like social media famous. Um, but now there's TikTok. So TikTok is, uh, okay, this looks like a very weird insides. Uh, okay, I don't know if this one's gonna be any good. We'll see. It looks very dry. It feels very dry. It's very disappointing, Kroger. But we'll see. Maybe when we bake it down with the oil, it'll come back to life. But it's not gonna really cost anything extra to bake, to bake the extra one. <laughs> if it isn't good, we'll just deal with it. So. So I'm placing them all face up on my cookie sheet for right now. Hey, do you call these a cookie sheet, sheet pan, uh, jelly roll pan? Uh, what else? What's, what's the other? Roasting, not roasting pan, because that would have high sides. What's other things I've heard these called? Sheet pans, yeah, that's about it. Cookie sheets, sheet pans, and uh, jelly roll pans. extra seeds out. Okay. So, let's clean up a bit. Clean as you go. Don't be a, what? Okay. Right, let's move that out of the way. One more seed. Okay. Alright, so let's, now, I like to massage my olive oil in. So that being said, I'm gonna open my spices first. The reason I'm doing that is because the least amount that I touch my jar with yucky hands is better. So this is sort of a new thing for this house. Um, Mom doesn't really like granulated garlic. So the jar that I have like this has powdered garlic in it, garlic powder, which is really, really fine. Um, so we've been just using that just for just me and Jim, and I, I wanna keep it separate in its own bottle so I don't get confused, or mom doesn't get confused, or whoever's using it doesn't get confused. So, so now I'm gonna make sure I keep one hand clean and one hand mushy. Since I'm gonna keep my right hand clean and my left hand, I mean my left hand clean and my right hand mushy, I'm gonna move the spices over. So all you wanna do is just ma massage the olive oil in all over to all of your spaghetti squashes. I like that. So let's go like that. Let's have it the brown. Like so like that. Okay. Oh. To all of the surface. Okay. And now get the majority of the olive oil. I'm going to take onion powder, which I have my onion powder. You know onion powder sometimes clings together. So what I do, I have some um, minced onion mixed in there. So do you know how sometimes people put rice in their salt to absorb some of the moisture and act as an aggregate? Uh, now this is garlic powder. Um, I do that uh, to my onion powder. I add a little bit of the minced onion in there to work as an aggregate and to keep it clump free. And it really works, it works really well. Another tip. So I'm gonna turn each one of these over. 
I was thinking actually about roasting one um, right side up, but I think that just uh, ah, ripped my foil after all that. Here we go. Just move this off to the side real quick. <clears throat> Just gonna put the lids on just in case I knock it over. I'm gonna slice up the rest of this onion. This onion's been sitting in the fridge for a little bit, so there's no point in me. Um, I'm gonna roast it. I'm not worried about if it's too dry or whatever. I'm just gonna roast rings. So the trick is you go from the small end to the middle, then you turn it around, you go from the small end to the middle. Are you doing half moons, half rings, slices, whatever you want to call them. See, that's easy enough. I know this one you can see has already been like beaten and, and owned. <laughs> so I'm just gonna toss these all around with the, in the same pan with the squash, excuse me. I'm just gonna toss these all around the squash and get some roasted onion. With the same, in the same breath as some roasted squash. I'm gonna add this roasted onion to my sauce today, I think. I think that might be what I do. I don't know. I could have also added this to the sausage. That might have been actually a good idea, but because the sausage will take less time. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. It's not. It's not a problem to change your mind mid-stroke. As long as you as long as you can move it without too much trouble. I think the real reason I wasn't thinking about it is because I didn't want to add oil to the sausage pan. But the sausage will have its own oil. And a little oil. Okay, let's leave a little here and a little there. Okay. So now we're gonna put these both in the onion. In the onion and the oven. I forgot one thing, duh. Salt. Let's go put these in the oven. We're gonna put this one on the top rack, that one on the bottom rack, and yeah, let's get to it. Sometimes when you cook by yourself, you guys all want me to do it by myself. I'll show you how to do it by myself. I can't film and do that by myself. I don't have two hands. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't need help with anything. I was talking to the people. Oh, God. Okay. And we're just going to let them cook for a little while. The sausage I'll check in about 15 minutes and turn over. And then the squash probably be a little longer. Squash will be at least a half an hour it takes to roast the sausage. But, well. We'll take you with us. This has been about 20 minutes. Okay. Now, if you're gonna do something with them additional, like when we made sausage and pepper pasta, um, you, this might be done enough because they'll continue to cook and whatever else you're gonna do. But I like that roasty char, char roasty, roasty char stuff. 
so and then those are not really anywhere close to being done oh yeah they look good oh yeah okay they look really good they're much darker than i usually get them which is good so they're very squishy i think my other tongs went in the uh in the wash yeah I put them in so you can see how that's all nice and almost translucent around the edge let's see how the two did that were sort of dry hey not bad looks like we're gonna have a lot of spaghetti squash so we just let them cool a tiny bit so we can handle them but if you wanted to eat them right away you could just handle them with your pot holder and your tongs okay that one almost came apart on it yeah that's all right and this one's got a nice roasted edge on it too so yep. all right so we're gonna let everything cool just a little bit and then we'll go ahead and shred it up and we'll finish up thank you so this part is relatively simple. I'm gonna move this off to the side. This pan is cool, but this food is still warm. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of the onions, put this stove on, get my olive oil. This is just a small sauce pot, because I am just gonna make a little sauce. So, I'm gonna take the onions off of both of these. You don't understand how much I just wanna throw the sausage down my gullet. <laughs> when we were growing up, and even as adults, my, my dad would always get the family pack and he would roast them and they'd be on the, they'd be on the counter just like cooling off and stuff and um you would just like walk by the kitchen and be like la, la, la. he would say stop it there won't be enough for dinner <laughs> right babe yeah. get all of the spaghettis just make sure you don't take any of the foil with you because you don't want foil in your hands is that the one yeah. thank you now we'll put everything back here. Are you leaving me? Okay. Now I wasn't sure if you. Yeah. Sorry. So then we'll take all these on this. Open that for me. You don't mind? The jar. The jar. Yeah. So this is just a doctored up sauce. Got all these good onions from before. You want to get the onion, the uh, sauce out of the fridge too? Yeah. I'll use that. Excuse my arm. I'm going to get the rest of the garlic that we have. It's like smell vision I wish you guys had smell vision I'm going to do whole cloves. Babe, can you get me the peeler? Yeah. I'm just smashing them. Might need to get a little bit more oil in there. Uh -oh. this feels like a white cube little thing, right? Yeah, it's alright. I got them all open. Okay, because I can't see the fire for some reason. Oh, okay. Sorry, it took me too long to peel my my onions started to burn a little bit. Because they were already started to roast. So too late. <laughs> really I got everything. That's it. Oh okay. Oh there's one more. But I'm not gonna put it in. I'll leave huh? it in there. I thought there was only two left. There's actually two more. Okay. And then I'm going to add this, even though this has more sugar. Yep. Oh, sorry about that. Still more sugar. Still sugar.
right? Sorry, it's loud. Can you get the uh, the lid that goes with this, sweetie? It's got the gray handle. You could probably shut that fan if you don't mind. Sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. So this part is like the easiest part. Literally, you just shred out the spaghetti squash. And if you notice, it looks like really like fine angel hair. Um, it's got a really good texture. The thing I always tell everybody, and I've explained this to my husband for years, is when you're trying to find a healthy substitute for something, you don't look at it as like, oh, that tastes just like pasta. What you do is you look at it like it's its own thing. Now, this first started with us with whole wheat bread and whole wheat pasta. You know, when I first introduced him to whole wheat pasta and whole wheat bread, I was like, well, it's not going to taste like white bread, but on its own merits, how does it taste, you know? And he really grow, grew to love the sort of nutty taste that whole wheat has. So the same thing with this, you're not gonna eat it expecting to taste spaghetti, but how is it on its own? How is it as an alternative to spaghetti? Um, you know, kind of like it's filling and when you add sauce to it, you really don't notice it and that kind of stuff. So. Wow, I really overbaked this. It's, but I wanted to show you. So that's a perfect example of, that's a perfect teachable moment. Technically, this is like 
could be considered overbaked because it's like charred on the outside, but you see that it's still making pasta-like strings and it's still holding together. It's just gonna be like even more sweet because just like any squash, the longer you cook it, the sweeter it gets. It brings out the sweetness in it, um, like the caramelization almost. No. So now one of the things we originally thought we would make is Mary Fry um, would make the spaghetti squash and put it with like a little meat sauce and bake it in the oven with cheese. And we've made that at this, you know, we've made that here before, you know, she's really inspired us to make that. Um, but today I just felt like I wanted those sweet Italian sausage that I bought. So I'm gonna try this. This is the one, I'm actually gonna taste it. Do you remember this one was like dry when we first started? Yeah, it tastes really good. It is holding up a lot better or a lot uh, more dense than the first, than the other one that was not as dry. <laughs> the one that started normally. But what I like, if you have something like that, you can mix it, you can combine it, and then you can get like some of different textures, which is really nice. Textures are nice when you're eating. Do you even know that that's a thing? Do you guys know that's a thing? I know you did. I was talking to the people. Did the people realize that textures is a thing that we look for and we don't even, some people don't even realize they look for it? Because some people are really turned off by certain textures. Oh, that's too slimy. Oh, that's too gooey. Oh, that's not slimy enough. Oh, that's too rough, too crunchy or whatever. So some people are really turned off by textures. But as, as, I think part of human nature is we like a multi-texture sort of situation. Um, that's one of the reasons we're drawn to cereal. You know, because it's got crunchy and soggy and sweet and salty and all the things. So that's two. Here is the other first good one. Baby, you want to learn how to do this? Do you want to do one? You don't have to. Just offer it. Like, you know, would you like to try it? I've done it before. Oh, okay. That's all. I'm just asking. Didn't realize. Take Sorry. Take the scrape. Take <sighs> it all out. No. That stove's still on low, right? Uh, I think The sauce? Don't. Okay. Don't go no, I don't. It's okay. So what do you think? Should I bake some of this with some sausage in it or should I just serve it on the side? That's a good question. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. <laughs> don't we, didn't we used to just mix it together? Well, yeah, the last, that's why I said the last two times we had it, I made it like Mary makes it, where she bakes it in the oven with cheese and the sauce mixed in already. Well, I don't know about making it with bacon in the oven, but. Yeah, you don't realize that's what I did, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we do have one more, but what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm just gonna, that one kind of came out in chunks, so I wanna make sure I spread it up. And now this is the other half of the one that was sort of dry. Um, yeah, I like the texture on this one that was sort of dry. I wonder if it's better for me to like leave it sitting around and get almost like, <laughs> almost rotten spaghetti squash. Well, it wasn't like, and, and it wasn't even like rotten. When I opened it, when I cut it open, it looked really dry inside. And I was like, oh, I wonder if this is close to being not good anymore, you know? Oh, oh. So, so I will tell you what I like about this is I, even though I made a lot of sauce, um, I won't sauce all of this. I will leave some of it plain. Um, if you like olive oil and garlic, you can always do olive oil and garlic. You can add butter to it and just have it like buttered noodles. If you wanna take it to its sweet side, you can always do like cinnamon and brown sugar and treat it like a, like a sweet potato or like pumpkin. You know, that's nice too. It has a very mild flavor. Um, you know, not woody, not woodsy. No, not woody, like, you know, it's just a very, it's a very mild flavor, I like it. Not bitter, that's what I meant to say, not bitter. So, here we go. Did I get all of it out? Okay, so that's everything. That's all of the 
That's all of the spaghetti squash. See, I got a lot. Two little spaghetti squashes for about four bucks. Got me way more than I would of any kind of non-wheat pasta. Um, and also this is, so this is, um, this isn't keto because it does, this particular squash does have carbs, but it obviously is gluten-free. So it's way cheaper than any gluten-free pasta. Um, and if you're doing plant-based diet, you know, and you're trying to be non-GMO and stuff, you can just get some organic spaghetti squash and then there you go. But I'm just gonna mix in some of that dry with some of that really gooey <laughs> pasta. And then we're gonna just let it cool. And then, um, yeah, so when the sauce is all done, we'll mix it up, we'll plate it up, we'll get some, get some, some food going for you, okay guys? There you go, spaghetti squash. Now, while Jim is plating this up, I did mention earlier about making the Mary Fry inspired meal. Um, one of the things Mary would do is she would take like ground beef and make like a meat sauce. And then she would take some of the spaghetti squash with some beet and some sauce and some cheese and bacon in the oven, almost like a meaty, you know, baked ziti, but obviously with spaghetti squash. Um, and I love that. I actually made that for Jim before as well. Um, I asked him if he wanted that today and he just wanted to have it separate, which is fine with me. But all you do really, no joke, is if you do that while it's hot, you really don't even have to bake it to melt the cheese. But if you want to, you bake it. So what it does is it allows the sauce to get absorbed into the spaghetti squash a little bit and the cheese to get a little bit toasty caramel on top. And it's just really delicious that way. You can use mozzarella cheese and Parmesan cheese. That's what I prefer when I was doing it. Um, and then just whatever size casserole dish, depending on how big your family is, how much spaghetti squash and meat sauce that you have. Okay, that's it. Now you could always take the meat out of the sausage and replace that instead of ground beef. So that's it. I hope you guys really enjoy this. If you try it, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and share with friends and family. Anybody knows looking for something that's really delicious but relatively easy. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. I'll see you next time. Bye.